What's up everyone? I'm Andrea, your real life English fluency coach. And today, based on so many requests, we are learning English with Prison Break. This is the police. You are completely surrounded. Action Pack series is perfect for learning vocabulary related to prison and law enforcement. The story revolves around a man who has been sentenced to death for a crime that he did not commit and his brother's elaborate plan to help break him out of prison together. Now, let's learn English with Prison Break. Name and back number. Schofield, Michael, 94941. You're a religious man, Schofield. Never really thought about it. Good, because the Ten Commandments don't mean a box of piss in here. We got two commandments and two only. The first commandment is you got nothing coming. What's the second commandment? See commandment number one. Gotcha. You talking out the side of your neck? Come again? I said, are you being a smart ass? Just trying to fly low, avoid the radar, boss. Do my time and get out. There isn't any flying under my radar. Good to know. In case you're new here, we want to let you know that every week we make lessons just like this one to help you learn English without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. In fact, Lisa says that our channel has been a game changer for her English. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single lesson. You're a religious man, Schofield. Never really thought about it. Did you notice the connected speech in this utterance? He says thought about it as if it was one word. In the UK, we would say this as thought about it. But in American English, these two T's change into a D sound. Let's check out other examples of similar word combinations. What about you and me? What about us? Forget about it. Just forget about it, all right? What's going on? Did you drive me out here to kill me? I thought about it, but then I put that thought on hold. Now listen to this clip again and take the opportunity to repeat what he said. Never really thought about it. Never really thought about it. Never really thought about it. Good, because the Ten Commandments don't mean a box of piss in here. We got two commandments and two only. The Ten Commandments are a set of biblical principles relating to ethics and worship. As Schofield is introduced to prison life, the guard here doesn't mince words. That's to say, he doesn't moderate his language and is even mean and hostile. Clearly, we're talking about renting, not buying. You need an ongoing business, someplace you can slide in, do your thing, and remain anonymous. I'm not going to mince words. This is your best bet. If Prison Break is your pick for what to watch during quarantine, you should know that family-friendly language is not exactly what you'll get. This and the next scenes are full of slang and inappropriate language. Good, because the Ten Commandments don't mean a box of piss in here. We got two. This is not a very common expression. The neutral equivalent to this is that something doesn't mean anything. The way he says it, however, carries a stronger meaning. We got two commandments and two only. The first commandment is you got nothing coming. Only usually goes before numbers in a sentence. Example, I have only one brother, or I only have one brother. It is not very common, but if you put it after the number, it gives it more emphasis. I have one brother only. In some instances, you'll even see messages used only in this way for emphasis, like cash only. We understand each other then? Yeah. Friday. Not Saturday, not Sunday. Friday. It's totally understood. I don't want hundreds, I don't want fives, I don't want ones. I know, I know. Tens and twenties only. No, honey, Luke's fine. And they won't take a credit card? No, it's 1600 Cash only. Teacher's lounge. They got a TV in here. We can't go in the teacher's lounge. Why not? Um, it's for teachers only. You're a teacher. However, here the guard phrases this sentence into a type of fixed expression. Take a look at these examples and try to get the meaning. She won't go to any hotel that's not five stars and five only. I'm selling this car for $3,000 and three only, nothing less. 
Would you like to master how natives really speak? Then I highly recommend our Fluent with Friends course. In this 48 week course, you will learn with the first two seasons of Friends, receive PDF power lessons every week, vocabulary memorization software, and access to our Fluency Circle global community so that you are never alone in your learning journey. And the best part is, you can try it right now for free with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click here or in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. The first commandment is you got nothing coming. What he means by this is that Schofield has nothing to look forward to in prison. He will have a bad time there and there's no way to avoid that. What's the second commandment? See commandment number one. Gotcha. Gotcha means I understand what you're trying to say. Uh, excuse me, Jerry is the director? Which one's he? One in the director's chair. Gotcha. You talking out the side of your neck? Come again? I said, are you being a smart ass? Because Schofield doesn't understand what he means by talk out of the side of your neck, we can presume that the dialogue is meant to transmit to the viewer that Schofield is still an outsider that doesn't know anything about life and the slang used in prison. What you'll probably find interesting is what he says to ask for a repetition. Come again? This is a casual way to ask someone to repeat what they've said if you didn't hear properly or didn't understand. That girl is freaky! <laughs> Come again? Freaky. Freaky? Yeah, freaky. The guard then rephrases the expression, talk out of the side of your neck for us, and says, Come again? I said, are you being a smart ass? A smart ass is a person who is irritating because they behave as if they know everything. Oh, Granny's old news. I think we have a better story brewing. The Discord at this year's G8 Summit? Don't be a smart ass. The network is coming to see Megan today. We have to do a great show. Just trying to fly low, avoid the radar, boss. Do my time and get out. Here he's using a modified version of the expression to fly under the radar. This means to go without being noticed, detected, or addressed. And what do I have to do? You just find those cons. Only this time, you're gonna do it for me, unofficially, under the radar, no paper trail. We had a deal. The deal was that you stay under the radar. Is this under the radar, Brad? No, this is an office full of federal agents who now have all seen your face. Yeah, I don't care what they see. He says he wants to do his time. This means he wants to complete his prison sentence and regain freedom. The prosecution is asking that you do your time in a maximum security facility. There isn't any flying under my radar. Good to know. If someone gives you useful information, you can say this. What happens next? Oh, more testing, more success, more fame. Yeah, but don't worry. I will remain the same down-to-earth, humble Joe I've always been. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Trey Street Deuce has got the hoops, antonio has got the bleachers, Wood's got the weight pile. The CEO's got the rest. I'm telling you, the guards are the dirtiest gang in this whole place. The only difference between us and them is the badge. Who's the pet lover? He'll deny it, but he's D.B. Cooper. Parachuted out of a plane 30 years ago with a million and a half in cash. Doesn't look like the type. <laughs> Who does? Hey, what up, wholesale? Yeah, you okay? It's gonna be greater later. Yeah. What you doing with this fish, man? It's my new celly. Huh. Wholesale's got it wired up out of commissary. Anything you want, he can get it for you. Trade Street Deuce's got the hoops. Artenio's got the bleachers. Wood's got the weight pile. The CEO's got the rest. Here, he's talking about the different groups, or as they're more commonly known, gangs inside the prison and what they own. One of the gangs considers the hoops as part of their territory. This is a different word for basketball. If you like this sport, you've probably heard the phrase, shoot some hoops. The bleachers is a seated area to sports field, like the one seen here. Weight pile is how some prisoners would refer to the gym. While we're at it, can you guess what's an informal way to say, to lift weights? 
raise the volume, pump some iron, break a sweat. I'm telling you, the guards are the dirtiest gang in this whole place. The only difference between us and them is the badge. Can you guess which of these is a badge? Who's a pet lover? He'll deny it, but he's D.B. Cooper. Parachuted out of a plane 30 years ago with a million and a half in cash. He nicknames him Pet Lover because as you can see, he's showing affection for his pet. Then, to deny something means to say no or to say something is not true. Stealing from a guard. You can get thrown in a shoe for that, maybe even add a few years to your bid. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, don't deny it, I already know it's true. To parachute means to drop from an aircraft, as seen here. Parachuted out of a plane 30 years ago with a million and a half in cash. Doesn't look like the type. Who does? He's basically saying that he doesn't look like the type of person who would steal a million and a half dollars and jump out of a plane in a parachute. Okay, what's so important you couldn't wait until I was on dry land? Mason Treadwell's house burned to the ground the night that you left town. Wow, karma really is a bitch. I like Victoria Grayson is. I think she's the one who did it. Are you serious? She doesn't exactly look like the type. Looks are always deceiving with Victoria. She despises Treadwell and she despises you too. If you're enjoying this lesson, then why not check out our lesson on the hilarious Brooklyn Nine-Nine, the comedy series set in a police department. You can click here or in the description box below to watch it straight after this lesson. Wholesale's got it wired up out of commissary. Anything you want, he can get it for you. What he means here is that his cellmate has connections with the prison shop that sells items to the prisoners and thanks to this he is able to get supplies from outside the prison. I'm looking for someone. A guy named Lincoln Burroughs. Link the sink? Is that what they're calling him now? Yeah. And then he'll come at you with everything but the kitchen. Snowflake. Where can I find him? Man killed the vice president's brother. In a month, he's getting the chair, which means no one up this river is more dangerous than him. Because he's got nothing to lose now. What are they going to do, kill him twice? No way I can get to him? I know. The only time those boys get out is for chapel and P.I. P.I.? What's that? Prison industry. The guys that get along get to work. You know, painting, scrapping, making mattresses, you name it. I wouldn't get excited, though, if I were you, Fish. Why you want to see Boros so bad, anyhow? Because he's my brother. I'm looking for someone. A guy named Lincoln Burroughs. Link the sink? Is that what they're calling him now? Yeah. And then he'll come at you with everything but the kitchen. Snowflake. Everything but the kitchen sink is an expression that we often use humorously to say almost everything you can think of. For example, they were going away for only a few days, but they packed everything but the kitchen sink. I'm just going to add it. Oh, so, uh, so we can add things now? Yeah, why not, right? I mean, we got the time and we got the ink. Everything but the kitchen sink. What did I just say? A snowflake is this. This is also used to refer to a self-obsessed, overly sensitive, or easily offended person in a derogatory way. Man killed the vice president's brother. In a month he's getting the chair, which means no one up this river is more dangerous than him, because he's got nothing to lose now. Getting the chair refers to someone that will be sent to die in the electric chair. We say that someone doesn't have anything to lose, or has nothing to lose, when they are in a very bad situation. So if they are unsuccessful in a task or action, they will not suffer more. Let's see this expression put into use. Becoming president is the most important thing to her. If we take that away, she has absolutely nothing to lose. And I guarantee you, she will do everything she can to take everyone she can down with her. And he found himself with nothing to lose in a town that he'd always imagined would be his destiny. And for the first time in many years, Michael had hope. The guys that get along get to work, you know, painting, scrapping, making mattresses, you name it. We normally say this as to get along with someone, meaning you have a good relationship with someone. 
The way that he says it here is a little different. Here it's a synonym for to behave well. We say you name it after we say a list of things. Let's watch some examples. There's something you should know. What do you mean? He's not some innocent victim, Link. He and Christine have been exchanging emails, phone calls, you name it. I've got some kind of plan. I just haven't figured it out yet. My daddy uses a special shellac on this thing. This is water resistant, heat resistant, you name it. Good to know. I wouldn't get excited though if I were you, Fish. We commonly use the collocation, if I were you, to give advice. Example, if I were you, I wouldn't go out now. A storm is coming. Hey, you know how it is, good men doing bad things because of circumstance. I'd call her back if I were you. Tell her to forget you were ever born. I swear to God, man, when I, when I get hold of if you... If I were you, I'd be doing everything in my power to demonstrate my competence right now. Why do you want to see Boris so bad anyhow? We often collocate so bad after want or need to intensify the meaning of those verbs. How are we doing on the Pugnac? Hey, I'm working on it. We'll work faster. I need that stuff tonight. What's up there in that infirmary that you need so bad? You get me that Pugnac, and maybe I'll tell you. Why do you want to stay in here so badly? Someone here I can't bear to leave behind. I guess that means we got something in common. Lastly, anyhow is another word for anyway. In this case, anyhow, or more commonly, anyway, collocate at the end of a question to show that you're redirecting the conversation to the question itself. It means I'll think about it. No promises. Why you need this watch so bad anyway? Let's just say it means a lot to someone in my family. Here you go, man. Yeah, yeah. These were seriously hard to get. What you need them for anyway? None of your business. Back number. Schofield, Michael. 94941. You're religious man, Schofield. Never really thought about it. Good, because the Ten Commandments don't mean a box of piss in here. We got two commandments and two only. The first commandment is you got nothing coming. What's the second commandment? See commandment number one. Gotcha. You talking out the side of your neck. Come again? I said, are you being a smart ass? Just trying to fly low, avoid the radar, boss. time and get out there isn't any flying under my radar good to know trade street deuce has got the hoops artenia's got the bleachers wood's got the weight pile the ceo's got the rest I'm telling you, the guards are the dirtiest gang in this whole place. The only difference between us and them is the badge. Who's the pet lover? Bill deny it, but he's D.B. Cooper. Parachuted out of a plane 30 years ago with a million and a half in cash. Doesn't look like the type. Who does? Hey, what up, wholesale? Yeah, you okay? It's gonna be greater later. Yeah. What you doing with this fish, man? It's my new celly. Huh. Wholesale's got it wired up out of commissary. Anything you want, he can get it for you. I'm looking for someone. A guy named Lincoln Burroughs. Link the sink? That what they're calling him now? Yeah. And then he'll come at you with everything but the kitchen. Snowflake. Where can I find him? Man killed the vice president's brother. In a month, he's getting the chair, which means no one up this river is more dangerous than him. Because he's got nothing to lose now. What are they going to do, kill him twice? No way I can get to him? I know. The only time those boys get out is for chapel and P.I. P.I.? What's that? Prison industry. The guys that get along get to work. 
you know, painting, scrapping, making mattresses, you name it. I wouldn't get excited though if I were you, Fish. Why you want to see Boros so bad anyhow? Because he's my brother. Why don't you start talking and tell me what you want? $50,000. <laughs> oh man, 50 Gs? How you figure that? 35 for the pound of Matthew stole and another 15 for my partner's pain and suffering. <laughs> 